Welcome to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Andrew Bartolotta. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference in our community and around the globe. Quiet quitting, workplace culture, remote work, chances are all these phrases you've heard both at your workplace and on LinkedIn and across the digital media landscape. So how do you create a workplace culture that attracts top talent? Joining us today to answer that question is HR strategist and workplace culture catalyst, Lori Ann Duguay. Lori Ann, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Now, before we dive into today's topic, give listeners a quick history for your expertise and career, expanding decades in the government sector to then starting the people person HR. Uh, okay, so really quickly, I worked for 21 years. I worked in government in a variety of roles, all you know, mainly in HR uh, related strategy type roles. Um, about I would say seven, eight years into my career, I started to realize that you know um, I wasn't feeling the challenge that I initially felt when I started in, in my position. Um, unfortunately, you know, there were limited options in terms of my growth and my development there. So I had already kind of um, told myself that I wouldn't be retiring from government. Uh, then, you know, it was convenient to have the government job and all this time off while I grew my family. And eventually, uh, once the kids got old enough and wanted nothing to do with me, I realized that, you know, that that lack of a challenge was really weighing on me. So I went back to school, did my postgraduate in HR management, labor relations, and I started doing some consulting on the side just to get that kind of added challenge. And 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 lo and behold, there's there was a huge demand for um for my services. So I decided to take a year off, try it full time for a year and haven't looked back since I did not return to government, my government job. Uh, but essentially it's it's the, the job itself and my experience is what has fueled what I now do. Um, when I say I wasn't getting that challenge, uh, my growth opportunities were quite limited. I, I had essentially become what I refer to as a tenant of the workplace. So, you know, I, I was sticking around for the pension that the, the the pension, the good benefits and all that. But other than that, I had checked out, right? So I was there occupying space, but really only doing what was barely required from my position. Um, so I, I understood and recognized that a lot of other people felt like that. Uh, so I started studying to figure out, you know, how could I come up with a formula with a roadmap of sorts or something that would, that would help organizations fix um, their employee experience as a means of attracting and retaining their talent um, so that's what I ended up doing. And now I am blessed to be able to do it full time and to help organizations create happier workplaces uh, on a full time basis. I love that. And I love that you're, you've used your experience. You've referred to it as sort of the golden handcuffs um, in some other um, mediums that uh, I was doing some research and, and heard that. And I love that phrase as well as like being a tenant in the workplace, because there are so many people that feel that way. They're, they're staying at the job because of the benefits. Um, I know um, you being in Canada, us being in the United States, just just the government factors and benefits there are very different. And so being able to sort of recognize that like people are, a lot of people are unhappy in the workplace and how can Here's sort of a, a million dollar question, but we can sort of take it in chunks. But what elements of a workplace or job make someone want to show up and thrive? Ah, great question. But bottom line, we can't motivate someone directly. Wouldn't life be wonderful? And wouldn't my daughter actually pick up more of her stuff lying around the house if we could effectively motivate a person directly? But what you can do is create that work environment that they find highly motivated and believe it or not, there's a, there's a tons of literature out there, uh, but we've all landed that there's 10 kind of key features, 10, 10 features of a workplace of an employee experience that really drive that level of motivation that makes people really excited to be there. Um, first one is clarity. I'll, I'll run through them really, really quickly. So clarity, they need to understand and know what their role is, what the expectations of the organizations are, and what they on the flip side can expect from the organization. Uh, the next one is communication. So they need to be in the know, basically. They need to be provided with the information they need to do their job, but also they want to make sure that, you know, information is flowing consistently in a 360 loop. So it's coming from the top down, bottom up. There's there's ways to facilitate it from the bottom up. And of course, peer to peer that you're facilitating information, the flow of information. Uh, I mean, so communication, number two. Number three, um, purpose and impact. People want to know that they're working for an organization that make a difference in the world, that leaves a mark, uh, uh, you know, 
whatever size mark that is. So it's really important to convey things like your vision, your mission, and your values to your employees so that they understand and, and, and know what they're here, you know, working towards, but also that they're able to connect uh, the work they do to the achievement of that broader uh, vision, mission, and values, right? They, that they don't just say, oh, I'm just a number. I'm just, no, because you're here. You've heard that NASA story, right? Where uh, I think President Kennedy, I believe, was walking the grounds and he ran into a janitor and he asked him his name and he says, oh, so what is it you do here? Uh, and the janitor answered, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. How awesome is that? That, that clearly that guy you know, that organization were successful in helping people connect to the broader purpose and impact of that organization. Uh, the next one is one that we hear a lot, rewards and recognition, right? People want to know that they're they're seen, they're valued, their contributions are, 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 are make a difference and that, you know, their, their employer really appreciates them and, and sees where what they're contributing to the organization. Um, growth. People want to know that there's room to grow. They want to know that, you know, where I'm at today isn't necessarily where I'm going to be in 10 years. And here are the different career paths that I could take. Next one, training development. So not only, okay, now I know where I could end up, but here's how we're going to invest in your skills and in your growth, not only for your current position, but to get you ready in the event that something opens up in that kind of next succession position that you've, you've identified. So that's the next one. Um, Coaching, uh, sorry, autonomy and empowerment. People want to know that, you know, they're trusted to do the job they were hired to do and that, you know, they're, if, if they, they're not feeling comfortable or if they're feeling challenged, they'll have a manager that will coach and empower them into really identifying and troubleshooting that problem. So the difference between, you know, telling uh, the manager, telling someone that I need this at the end of the day and this is how you're going to get to it versus I need this at the end of the day Let's talk about how you think you can get that to me, right? So you're providing them the autonomy to come up with some solutions and to generate some options. Managers, so the managers, uh, the leadership, people no longer want to work for that command and control. You do what I say because I said so. Mm, that's not flying anymore. Um, so uh, the, the, the managers really need to take on a role of a coach. Uh, of, of helping people kind of identify their potential that they may not see and then building a plan and working with them to help them really step into that full potential. The next one is relationships. We spend eight, 10, 12, sometimes 14 hours a day with these yeah. people. So, so it's really important to have systems in place that will uh, enable and fuel connection and that will help people kind of uh, will nurture that relationship between peer to peer, but also manager to direct report and of course, uh, to employee to the front facing client or whatever the patient depending on what the, the nature of the business is and finally work life balance that's one that you know it shows up everywhere. Uh, they want to know that the employer employees want to work for places that the employer recognizes and supports them having a life outside of work. So really, really quickly, those are the 10 kind of key features that make people want to show up. And when you think about the fact that one in four employees are currently shopping around <laughs> of your current employees are shopping around, that's it's a job seekers market out there, right? Then it would make sense for you to revisit that employee experience and the way that you're that, that an employee kind of uh, the journey of that employee within your organization in order to see whether or not you're actually providing those 10 key features. I love those 10 key features because when you really look at the breadth of your workplace and the culture, you really hit all of them on the head. That's fantastic. And just learning that, you know, a quarter of your current employees are shopping around for other uh, other jobs, other careers like that's that's a red flag right there. Like, hello, wake up. Let's what can we do about this? You know, quiet quitting phenomenon or what can we do um, to increase rewards and recognition? So what are some sort of low cost, no cost tips when it comes to recognition that would really benefit your employees to increase the workplace culture? Um, okay, so here's one that a lot of people think when they think of recognition, a lot of organizations, they go to, you know, oh, we'll have a luncheon or we'll have, um, we'll, we'll, we'll send out, you know, thank you notes or we'll leave little chocolates on people's desks and, or they think even bigger, we'll have an award ceremony, you know, and have people nominate and, and, and so it doesn't have to be that big. It doesn't have to be that formal, right? 
And a lot of people think it's all on the shoulders of the managers. I agree, like definitely agree that leaders need to make sure they take the time to recognize the efforts of their team. And, and in recognizing those efforts and providing that feedback, as long as it's feedback that's not just, you know, good job, because really good job, does that tell me which behavior to repeat? No, you want to be really specific, right? You want to say, hey, the way that you presented that visual to the client really seemed to resonate and helped us, you know, drive drive home exactly what we were proposing to build for them. And I'm pretty sure that's one of the reasons we got this contract. So good job. Ah, visual, need to repeat, do that again, right? Um, so certainly important to have a manager, but the most valued uh, recognition is peer-to-peer. -peer. And I think that's where a lot of organizations miss the mark. They don't develop the programs or the systems to facilitate that peer-to-peer -peer recognition. Uh, when I was with government, one of the things they did, they introduced this kudos program. And it's so silly, but it was, it was I would say, low to no cost. Uh, little stock cards, like little cards that were folded, a little piece of paper folded. Everybody was provided three and asked to, you know, write a personal note about something that one of your peers did uh, that you really appreciated made a difference in your work. Okay, so we we were given we have one month to give away those three cards. If you need more, come get more. But you know, it, it just started to facilitate and create this culture where if someone does something that makes a huge difference in my job, then I'm definitely going to call them out on it and say thanks for for doing that because what you did there made my job that much easier, or it empowered me to do what I needed to do, or whatever the case may be. I still have my pile of kudos cards here that I would have received. And I was in a satellite office, so they would just, you know, flip them into the inter-office mail. Um, mm -hmm. And I would just get it. Some companies have migrated to like an electronic format like that, which is cool too, but not quite as personal as a, as a handwritten note, right? Um, one of the important things when it comes to recognition is to realize that not everybody likes to receive recognition the same way, right? I always yes, have to talk important. about, I'm a everything disc um, um, fanatic. I'm also a licensed partner with them. So I use their products in everything I do in all facets of the business. And one of the things that we talk about is how, you know, what, if I call you out and you're a certain style at a meeting, you might love it, but a whole other style might be completely intimidated by being called out and saying, Hey, we really want to put our hands together for Andrew here. Cause he did a great job with that project. And he's going to be like dying and mortified inside. And yeah. that'll actually be completely demotivating for him. Right. Mm -hmm. So so really to take the time to understand your team's preferences, I encourage organizations to include a question in their performance development or their appraisal uh, plan, however, that exercise that says, how do you prefer to be recognized? Are you up? Are you okay with public accolades? Or would you prefer a private email or just a message or a one-on-one -on -one meeting in, in private? What's your preference, right? So then you're able to really tailor your approach so that it's that much more impactful and that much more personalized to each team member. I love that you talk about um, handwritten notes because we live in this technologically advanced society where we always feel like there has to be technology and there has to be this shiny object using digital tools to thank people. But it's really as simple as a handwritten note to really express kudos. Um, and I also love that you talked about there's a, a book um, that my wife and I read, you know, the love languages, and it's almost similar to talk about. Um, Did yeah, you ever see this yeah. one? Yes. This one is about appreciation in the workplace, the five That's languages great. of appreciation. And it's Gary Chapman, but he did a collaboration with Paul White. That's but fantastic. Yes. Yeah, so he... Five love language. What are the yeah. odds I have that book on my desk? That is crazy. We did not plan that, by the way. That was not planned. That was <laughs> that so is not planned. Someone, I talked about it yesterday with a client and, and they were like, oh, have you ever heard of five love languages? I'm like, do you know there's an appreciation in the workplace book? And they were like, really? So I pulled it out and I showed them. <laughs> that is crazy. Yes. Gary Chapman, that book, like definitely um, need y'all to check that out. And so if someone wants to work with you and their team, what does that look like? And what are some of the services that you offer? I'm working with an organization. They'll bring me in. And obviously, you know, to, to transform culture is not done in a one month agreement. So normally we're looking at a minimum of one year working together. And so they assign some resources internally that I then train, be it their HR department or some of maybe it's some other talent management folks. And so I, I, I work with them at first mapping out their current state. So let's talk about, you know, when you're pitching yourself in the interview to prospective candidates, what does that look like? How are you doing that? And then when you're actually bringing them on, 
how are you communicating? So I'm really asking questions relevant to all of my those drivers, right? Okay, fine, communication. How are you being in clarity? How are you providing them a realistic idea of what they're signing up for during the interview? You know, how, are, how much information are you giving them? Once they've accepted the job offer, what's the communication like? How are you taking that opportunity to showcase the level of communication that they can expect when they come into the organization? Uh, and, and we really map everything out from the onboarding orientation. I even, this one recent client, they had nothing and we started working with like things like the manager sending an email the week before saying, hey, we're excited to have you join our team. Here's how we're, we're, we're getting ready for your arrival. Uh, look forward to meeting you next week, right? How cool would it be to get that email to know that you're not just a number, right? That the manager took time to send you an email. And then usually I, I recommend also a series of email from the HR department, giving them kind of as much information as they can ahead of time, because one of the most intimidating days at work is that first day, right? So how can you actually, how can you take away some of that intimidation factor by providing a lot of information and FAQ? Here are some of the questions that we often get in those first few days. Here's what you can expect. Here's how we dress. This is the, the, the dress, that, you know, so that you're not showing up. I had an organization uh, talk about how that person, they were in HR and it is like on the first day I showed up in a suit and tie and everybody was in jeans and a t-shirt like I felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb right I'm like perfect let's use that how can we avoid that happening what kind of information can we provide ahead of time right once they start that onboarding and orientation what's that looking like is it a half day exercise or is it a 120 day supported training where we facilitate connections we match you with a buddy the buddy's only job is to impart that that non-spoken stuff to you about the culture, how we roll. Here's stuff that nobody really says out loud, but this is really how it happens. We go there for break. Here's a coffee shop. People tend to go to that coffee shop a lot. So really imparting that cultural piece. So abbreviating the integration just by being able to get that information ahead of time. Then you've got your mentor who provides you and transmit all the technical stuff, but they're your lifeline too. As you're starting to integrate into your role and start to understand and get your feet wet, you've got a, a lifeline within the organization that you can go to without feeling like you've got to bother your manager every time, right? So really starting to build those things. And then we talk about onboarding orientation, obviously a lot more little details in terms of you know, 30, 60, 90 day plans, what they can expect. And then we talk about once they're fully trained, what are you doing to keep them here? What are you doing to prevent them from shopping for getting a, a, a one foot out the door? How are you continuing to, you know, connect their, for example, purpose and impact? How are you, how are you reminding them of what we're here trying to achieve? Are you celebrating success stories? Are you talking about and showcasing, you know, how the work they do connects to that broader, that broader um, success story and why, you know, I don't care if you are working uh, a frontline job, you're accepting you're the front face of the organization, you know, or if you're holed up in an office doing finance, you all had a hand in providing the service to that client at one point or another. So are you creating kind of these stories that map and connect the client uh, to every person within the organization to really help them feel like they're part of a broader purpose and understand that connection, right? Uh, so we talk about that. And then we also talk about, of course, the performance development process, which in my mind is really where it's your opportunity to continue to measure these different um, these different drivers and the extent that you do that you actually are providing them. Uh, we talk about employee engagement surveys and employee satisfaction surveys. We normally actually start with just a, a baseline measure by talking about, you know, let's let's do an employee net promoter score. Uh, and so we'll know where we're at, then we'll start working together and, and we'll re-measure somewhere down the line, but also that initial employee net promoter score will provide just some very preliminary data that we'll know how to build that deeper dive engagement survey. We work with that, we develop those kinds of processes, and finally we develop processes for the exit. So when you look at that journey, right? Interview, recruitment, onboarding orientation, training and development as you're in your job, and then exit also, right? So performance, sorry, performance management, and then exit, because at the exit is where they tend to be the most honest in terms of where there's room for improvement. So that's typically how I work with them. Uh, and then I also implement some leadership development stuff in there because I built a like a leadership development program that really helps people pivot, uh, organizations pivot their leadership style to a coach and empower style, that, that people powered style. Yeah. Lorianne, I'm thinking of so many companies, organizations that my friends work at, and that I'm like, oh man, they could really use Lorianne Duguay for their not only recruitment, but retention. I mean, retention is huge because it's hard to 
uh, to keep people and and to be able to provide them with this um, holistic experience that they really feel like they're valued in their workplace. So all of that that you can provide an organization is fantastic and is so, so needed. Where can people go to learn more about your services and efforts? They can certainly go to my website at www.thepeopleperson.ca. I actually have a book coming out this summer, uh, if all goes well. Uh, and the, the book will provide uh, in-depth kind of description of each of those drivers, but also help operationalize it. Say, okay, I know about this. Now what do I do about it? And there's a bit of a roadmap, not a bit, there's definitely a roadmap there on if they want to kind of take ownership of that process of that assessment process, it gives them enough information to start really identifying some quick wins, medium and longer term uh, initiatives they could be putting into place. So, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for the book, uh, which is, by the summer for sure should be out uh, and then organizations will be able to reach out uh, there'll be a bunch of connecting uh, information in there as well for how to connect with our company and uh, I'm on LinkedIn if they wanted to connect I'm always open to broadening my network there as well well Lori and Duguay we could talk for hours we can't wait to have you back on our show to talk about your book and really expand on some of these aspects of workplace culture and um, retention Thank you so much for coming on the show and thank you for all you're doing to really um, expand employee engagement across North America and beyond. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's always fun to be able to talk about these things so that people are aware of them and start to realize that it's not that complicated or costly to invest and spend some time kind of shaking up that existing culture and, and, and recreating it while it actually costs you a ton to not be keeping and to be constantly uh, hemorrhaging your employees and having to backfill, 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 right? So it's always nice to be able to, to chat and foster awareness. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me.